Sir Andrew, has the announcement from President, President Putin that we've heard about recognising the separatist regions now made the prospect of de-escalation much less likely? What's your read on that? Yes, well, I think it shows that uh, Putin is absolutely untrustworthy. It shows that he's a total hypocrite. That's not news, though. I don't see any advantage to Russia in what he's done. I do see huge disadvantage to Ukraine. But at least one can know that the Minsk agreement that he was talking about is now written off. So we're in a state of some anarchy. In your opinion, what is the right measured response from Washington and Brussels at this stage? Well, that's very hard to tell, but some sort of reaction, increased sanctions of some sort, is certainly appropriate. Um, if we were being really fierce, we would throw the whole lot at him. Because what he will do is to put his own troops, or more of his own troops to be more accurate, in that region, thereby moving the, pre the military pressure on Ukraine considerably further into Ukraine. Nobody knows where he's going to stop, but the logic is that he's going to stop when he's got total control over the politics, at least, of Ukraine. And that means he's installed his own regime in, in Ukraine to try to rule the, the, the country. That is the logic, to do the same sort of thing as he has been doing with and to Belarus to absorb uh, both countries under his control. That's always been his aim anyway. Sir Andrew, is diplomacy dead at this point? I mean, same time yesterday we are talking about hopes of uh, a summit between Putin and Biden brokered by uh, French President Emmanuel Macron. Is that all off the table at this point? In my view, yes. In my view, it never had much of a prospect anyway. Uh, the difficulty is that we've been talking mostly about the, the formal Russian demands, which is the possibility of Ukraine joining NATO. But that is actually just an excuse for the Russians to uh, leave Ukraine unprotected so that they can move forward with their own demand, which is that Kiev should obey Moscow. Sir Andrew, can you talk about the international condemnation so far and where Russia stands in that context? Because Europe has been talking about sanctions, of course, along with the Americans. Japan came out in response today. We had a couple of mixed messages from the Chinese. Can you just walk us through how this impacts Russia? Well, it impacts Russia in over a, a fairly slowish time. Uh, Russia has huge uh, savings which it could have been used for its own good, but it's, it's got several months at least, if not years, of being able to resist sanctions, apart from the uh, um, Nord Stream 2. Um, and I think apart from the restrictions on Russian banks and so on that we were proposing to introduce, uh, the, it would be more the effect on Russian public opinion. You have to remember that the Russian people absolutely don't want war. You have to remember that they are living under strict control, putting, putting it politely, I would think of it as tyranny, from, from the Kremlin, and that uh, there is a certain fear within the Russian leadership of what their own people might, might do. There is certainly no s support for an invasion of Ukraine in the Russian people. But of course, his propaganda is very effective. And they do tend to believe that we are the guilty party, that we are trying to put pressure on Russia, that we are a threat to Russia, and so on. So it's, I'm not saying there's going to be an immediate Russian rebellion, 
that this is going to be a further blow to the real control of the Russian regime over its people. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersetti and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.